We thank the United States Congress and the President of the United States for putting the funds out there for use by the local governments in the United States, including the Osage Nation. As Congress and the President negotiated the second stimulus package to help the nation recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, Oklahoma's Native American tribes were busy using the CARES Act dollars they received after the first package passed. Over the past several weeks, we've shared with you some of the many ways tribes have been spending the money. Tonight in our series, Native America, The Road to Recovery, Tony Russell updates us on some of the projects and reminds us of how some tribes are still fighting to be recognized. This is uh, impressive, and it should be. It was built to be impressive. Native American tribes across the country have completed some impressive projects over the last several months. The Osage Nation, headquartered in Pahuska, says the $45 million in CARES Act money it received was an answer to a prayer. <laughs> Which is why they took a few minutes recently to thank those involved in their own language. The tribe has spent the last seven months building two facilities that would normally take much longer to construct. They were on a strict deadline to allocate the money by the end of the year. They're now celebrating the opening of two new facilities to help the tribe overcome food insecurity. At Harvest Land, they'll grow their own vegetables and raise fish. And in Hominy, they'll process their own livestock. We now have a year-round farm-to-table food supply chain that is ours and insulated from pandemic-caused breakdowns in other parts of the country. While many tribes across the nation are thankful for the funds and for being recognized as sovereign. This is money that did not go to the Bureau of Indian Affairs or to the federal bureaucracy. This money came directly to the Osage Nation. And this is proof if the funds bypass the bureaucracy and arrive to us, we know how to use them. It's not benefited all of them. This is not about the amount of money that we got. It's that they zeroed out our population. They treated us as if we didn't exist. The Shawnee tribe, based in Miami, Oklahoma, says it was underrepresented because of the formula the Treasury Department used to calculate what each tribe would receive. The Shawnee tribe received the minimum amount of $100,000 instead of what one study says it should have received, $4.5 The tribe is still fighting in court to get the money they say they deserve. The fact that Indian country was left so far behind in the way that that money was distributed to us that they refuse to take, you know, the interior's word for our citizenships. These are not club memberships. We're not, this is not the number of members a gymnasium has down the road. These are citizens, citizens of tribal governments. While the second stimulus extends the deadline by one year and removes some of the restrictions, tribes say they've had to utilize legal experts and accountants to comply with all the rules. There was also these gray areas too, the, the, the areas where you, where you would take a stand on how you were going to do something and uh, you'd ask the federal government, does this comply? And you get, well, maybe yes, maybe no. As tribes cut through the red tape, their COVID-19 committees have been tasked with making tough decisions on how to spend the money. It's really a, an unnecessary exercise, um, I think, for Treasury to put in so many restrictions for the tribe's use. It's not that the tribes can't spend down the money. I think we can all find a place to spend money where it's most needed if we were given the, the freedom to do so. Like the Osage tribe, the Cherokee and Muscogee Creek Nations, along with several other tribes, are also providing funds to battle food insecurity in a variety of ways. And I think sovereignty, food sovereignty, is probably the biggest and best form of sovereignty that a tribal nation can have. When you have the ability to feed and clothe your own people, then I think you take sovereignty to a whole new level. For many tribes, that sovereignty has also included individual assistance to tribal members and for the citizen Potawatomi, a payment up to $5,000 for business owners like artist Matt Bearden. It's made up for some lost, some lost revenue and, and I don't know, it's kind of recharged me a little bit. The tribes have also recharged their citizens by providing greater access to technology, including better access to the internet. These projects that we're using the CARES Act funding for, and this broadband project in particular, 
are getting us in a much better place to be prepared should we need to go all back home again. And grants to help citizens purchase laptops. Well, my thoughts were that it is very important because there's a lot of students that will have to be at home, you know, use, utilizing the virtual tools. So I felt like it was a great opportunity for the tribe to step in and to assist those students with the learning tools that they need. The tribes have also provided the needed tools for healthcare workers with the Cherokee Nation turning an old Walmart into a manufacturing facility for medical grade PPE. It gives us a little bit of peace of mind knowing that my nurses who've been on the front line through all of this are gonna have what they need um, to keep them safe. The tribes also needed a way to help their members stay healthy. For the Pawnee tribe, that included paying for rehabilitation of housing ventilation systems, providing cleaning supplies, and building a new fitness center. Keeping our members healthy is obviously the number one priority during this time, and especially with Native Americans dealing with diabetes, high blood pressure, and those kinds of things, and that being uh, one of the um, bigger triggers with COVID and dealing with it, um, it's obviously a priority for us. Oh, that's not bad at all. Okay. And to protect its citizens from coronavirus, most of the tribes are also helping get the vaccine out to those who need it by purchasing ultra-cold freezers and mobile vans to reach rural areas. Because of the CARES Act dollars that Cherokee Nation received, we've been able to make investments in equipment and supplies that help us with the pandemic response. And this freezer is a prime example of the way that we've used CARES Act dollars. Dollars that have also allowed the tribes to protect their culture and their elders, many of whom were first on the list to be vaccinated. To be able to be on the list to be the first to receive something, it, 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 it to me, it just kind of shows that the tribe is putting our elders and our speakers in, in the proper place. For the tribes, the proper place is the sovereignty of the nations and their people. Next week on Native America, The Road to Recovery. We'll take a closer look at the second stimulus package, which includes an additional $3.3 billion in direct COVID relief funding for tribes. Covering Native America, The Road to Recovery. I'm Tony Russell, Two Works for You.